Hi guys, it's Saria. Welcome back to my channel and another day of Vlogmas. So for today's video, this is a collaboration video organized by the Siskateers. Tony and Mary organized this and I'm so excited to be a part of it. Thank you girls for inviting me to this. Um, they have organized quite a few collabs I've been a part of in the past and I was just so excited to join this one. So this is a Disney gingerbread collab. So that was kind of super open to interpretation. Most people chose to make gingerbread houses, some use kits, some make their gingerbread from scratch, and some people are like me and they're doing none of those things because this is not real gingerbread. So I had the idea of making these little fake display only gingerbread cookies quite a while ago because I wanted them to look like little Mickey cookies. And because I was invited to this collab, I figured, hey, why not just combine the two videos into one? And I'm gonna be showing you guys how I made these little fake Mickey gingerbread cookies. Now this is kind of a bonus video because in addition to showing you guys how I made the little fake cookies um, for display only, I'm also going to be showing you guys how I um, added them onto this little stocking hanger. So I did decide to make this extra little decor piece for my house. It's super cute, super easy to make, and just a little bit of Disney Christmas. So make sure you guys go check out all of the other videos that are in this collab. I personally cannot wait to watch all of the beautiful creations that everybody makes out of gingerbread. And without any more chatting, let's jump into this video. Let's jump into the tutorial. On to making the actual little fake gingerbread cookies. So I'm gonna be using just Crayola Magic Mold in white. And I took out a piece um, pretty large. I would say you need a piece, uh, like a ball around the size of a softball. Mine's a little bit small actually. And then I roll it into a ball and then I just took a water bottle that I had on hand and I used it as a rolling pin because I don't have a rolling pin. And then using these little Mickey cookie cutters that I got off Amazon, you get a pack of five for about $5.50. I will link these in the description box below if you guys need to purchase them. So um, something I will tell you guys, if you wanna cut a bunch of them just to try them out, you wanna roll out as much of the clay as you can ahead of time, that way they're all around the same thickness. Now I cut a bunch of these because I have more crafts coming out with these, or I've already posted them. I'm not really sure when this video goes up, sorry. I probably have already posted other crafts using these cookie cutters as well as um, this magic mold technique of making little fake cookies. Now, after I've got these all cut out, I do give them 72 hours to dry. Now, it says online that they can be dry in 24 hours, but I read further and it said that for them to be 100% fully dry, they can't really be ruined as easily. You need to wait 72 hours. So I did, and then I went into painting them. Now, moving on to painting the actual cookies, I'll be using this uh, Apple Barrel acrylic paint in classic caramel. Um, I did this a couple different times. I did it with just this color and then another time I mixed in a little bit of a darker brown. I think it's just personal preference for what you want the cookies to look like. But I did use, after letting these dry for about three days, I just did two coats of this brown paint. And then I gave it about an hour to dry and then I went in with my puffy paint to decorate it. This is two coats of that brown paint, and now I'm gonna be using white puffy paint for icing around the edges first. Um, now, I would suggest not going in the order I did because I started on the outside and then painted toward the inside, which logic would say is not the best method. You should probably do the face first and then do the edges. Learn from my mistakes, guys. Um, but I'm just taking that white and I'm going all the way around the edge Definitely take your time with this and if you can kind of stand up while you do it, you'll have a better vantage point just to make sure that your icing looks nice and even. But that being said, guys, cookies are never perfect, so it kind of looks more like a real cookie when it has little imperfections.
After doing the edging, I moved on to the face. Again, I would actually do this first. I did do this first the second time I did it. Um, but using just some brown puffy paint, I'm drawing little eyes that are kind of like long skinny ovals. And I'm also going to do a nose and a mouth. I'm so sorry I'm going in a weird order but I actually decided to go back to the white and I did this little swirly kind of design on the ear just to make it look a little more like a frosted cookie and I did this to all four of these sizes And then going back to the brown color, this is when I'm going to draw in the little smiley faces. Um, and then the last color I'm using of puffy paint is red because I wanted to give little red, kind of like rosy cheeks on the ends of the smiles. Now there is my little gingerbread Mickey family. So the sign I chose to attach these to is from Hobby Lobby. I did get this 50% off or maybe 40% off, but it was on sale. And then I um, am just gonna take this, it does have hooks on the back, and I'm just gonna use my white Rust-Oleum chalk paint. I believe the exact, exact color is called lin linen, linen. Um, but I'm just taking a wide toothbrush and I'm just giving it one coat. Um, I actually really liked that you could still see some of the wood poking through um, on that one layer of paint, but obviously if you want yours to be you know, completely covered, you might need two coats. And then after letting that dry, I'm just going in with my Mickey cookies that have been drying overnight. And I'm just gonna space those out. I will tell you guys, I spent forever trying to like use a meter stick and give these exact measurements, but in the end, eyeballing them just ended up being way more effective with getting even spacing. Um, now I've considered two types of hooks. If you are really wanting to do actual stockings that have things inside of them, like it's legit the stockings that you guys use, and you're gonna put presents inside, I would suggest heavy duty hooks like this, um, just to make sure that they're able to bear the weight of the stocking once it has presents in it. But because I'm using just little tiny decorative stockings, I'm actually gonna use these tiny little um, twist screw hooks. I got these in a giant pack at Walmart, um, and the larger silver hooks are also from Walmart if you guys are looking. Dollar Tree does also have some hook options, it just kind of depends what you are wanting to do. But the thing I like about these little white ones is that you literally just twist them into the wood and they kind of insert themselves, so that's kind of nice. Um, now in order to make sure that all my hooks were the same spacing, I just took, I, I just basically measured at first, but then I was like, you know what's easier? I'm just gonna take a little piece of paper and I'm going to use it as like a spacing template. So I took a little piece of red construction paper and I just cut it to the size of the space from the edge of the board to the hook and used it on all my other hooks. And then I just continued this step for the other hooks. <laughs> Final step for this is using these little Dollar Tree felt cutout stockings. Um, they're labeled as ornaments, but I suppose you could use them for pretty much anything. I'm just going to use these for the stocking display. I am still kind of on the lookout for something cuter or a little bit more like high quality quote unquote looking. Um, originally I tried to write our names on this using a paint pen, but because it's such a stiff felt, the paint pen just was not up to the task. So I did switch over to puffy paint and again, not really what I wanted it to look like, but I still think that you know for uh, this year that's totally fine and then maybe when the Christmas stuff goes on clearance after the season I'll just keep my eye open for some um, slightly like more high quality miniature stockings but obviously it's totally up to you how you want to display this and what stockings you would like to hang from it and then after letting that puppy paint dry overnight you can go ahead and hang it up on your stocking hanger again the types of hooks you guys use will totally depend on what you want to hang. These little white ones were perfect for these little lightweight miniature stockings. If you guys have any questions at all, of course, just leave comments for me below and I will answer them. <laughs> And then I also wanted to show you guys our little cookie display next to our Milk for Santa cup. I think this is so cute and although they're not really edible, it is a really cute decoration. Thank you 
you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to go check out Mary and Tony's channel and their awesome gingerbread video. And gingerbread? Oh my god. Also be sure to check out all of the other videos of the people. Why can you not speak? Also be sure to go check out all of the other channels in this collab and the awesome gingerbread creations that they made. If you guys are new to my channel, please subscribe. I am doing Vlogmas, which means I have already started posting a video every single day in the month of December and will continue on through December 24th. <sighs> yeah, it's a lot. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for my next video. Bye.